Welcome to Social Allo Ministries, where we are committed to glorifying God while exposing the devil. Rejoice in your afflictions, especially when so-called fellow Christians are persecuting you. they are people who claim that they're serving God, but they truly don't realize that they're serving God in the capacity of being a messenger of Satan. Yes? They're serving God, but they're actually a messenger of Satan. And you can tell by their fruits. Because rather than doing things to fight against the kingdom of darkness, they're fighting against the kingdom of light. But they're actually being used, in a sense, to propel you towards your destiny, so you can fulfill your calling. Because even the devil is a servant of the Most High God. During the time when the devil tried to tempt Jesus, I'll share something with you from Luke 5, or Luke 4, verses 5 through 8. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will give it. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. It was also reminded to the devil that the Lord was his God. And we see how the devil served the Lord. For example, in Job chapters 1 and 2. Job was a righteous man. The devil was looking for someone to afflict. And the Lord actually allowed it. When you go to Job 42, you see how the Lord blessed Job for enduring the suffering. But there's more. In 1 Timothy, in 1 Timothy 1, verses 18 through 20, it is written, This I charge I commit unto thee, or the correction, this charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which were before, or which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience, which some have, having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck, of whom his Hymenius and Alexander whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. So Hymenius and Alexander, they may have thought they were doing godly works, but they were sent over to Satan so that they would learn not to blaspheme. They were being afflicted. And when you think of Jesus, Jesus was without sin. There was a religious institution. There were holy men who tried tempting him on several occasions. And basically, he blasted them. He called them a generation of vipers. He called them hypocrites. He called them children of hell. It wasn't good. But these men claimed they were serving God. And they even felt as if they were serving God when they delivered the Son of God for crucifixion. They thought they were serving God by delivering the Son, Jesus, for crucifixion. And yes, they were, because it was necessary for Christ to be crucified, for him to die to be the perfect atonement for our sins. But that's not the thought process they had. They thought they were serving God in another capacity by handing Jesus over and demanding his crucifixion. And it's not to say that Pontius Pilate was an upstanding guy, but the Lord gave Pontius Pilate's wife, a dream, letting him know to have nothing to do with Jesus. And Pontius Pilate offered, <laughs> offered someone else in Jesus' stead, a criminal. But they said, no. Free Barabbas and crucify Jesus. So they all thought they were doing a godly thing. But they were all being messengers of Satan. And like Jesus said, they were children of hell. 
They were like white washed, whitewashed sepulchers, graves, full of dead men's bones. But on the outside, they pretended as if they were holy. But it continues. In um, in Second Corinthians twelve verses seven through eleven, and when I mentioned about rejoicing when you're being afflicted, the Apostle Paul wrote, "And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelations that was given to me a thorn in the flesh, it a thorn in his flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me." lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might, might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in the infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I am become a fool in glorying. Ye have compelled me, for I ought to have been commanded of you, for in nothing am I behind the chiefest, the very chiefest apostles, though I be nothing. So because of these things, been buffeted by the messenger of Satan, the Apostle Paul, the one who's credited with writing more than half the New Testament, remain humble. And I'll close out with 1 Corinthians 5, verse 5. To let you know that yes, there are some people who claim that they're messengers of, messengers of God but some of them don't even realize that even when God sends them, that they are actually being a messenger of Satan. Because in a lot of cases, like the Apostle Paul said, that he had a messenger, a thorn in his flesh, buffeting him to keep him humble. 1 Corinthians 5.5 5. To deliver such an one unto Satan... For the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. So about delivering someone to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved. So when I mentioned about rejoicing in your afflictions, and especially when you realize that someone is a messenger of Satan, that person has a purpose. Jesus, throughout his entire ministry, there were people who would follow him. Not because they wanted to get to know the Son of God, but because they wanted to trap him. They wanted to set him up. They wanted to tear him down. They wanted to destroy him. And eventually, they wanted to kill him. But they failed. There are times when the Lord, similar to how he let the devil afflict Job in chapters 1 and 2, where the Lord will allow messengers of Satan into your life, but trust him that it is for his divine purpose. In some cases, it is for humility. In other cases, it is to propel you towards something else. I've mentioned other videos, and you may, you may have to read between the lines, but I went through one situation in my life that I don't think I'll ever forget, where I got tangled with a messenger of Satan And even hearing the person's name gets me in war mode. When the Lord wanted to raise Samson as a judge over Israel, he allowed the Philistines to kill his wife. They actually set her on fire, her and her father. But in setting her on fire, they also set Samson on fire. And he made them pay which also eventually, messengers of Satan, they will pay the price. But again, rejoice in your afflictions to include and realize that someone who's professing to be a messenger of God 
is actually a messenger of Satan.